And here we look at the entire U.S. ethanol production last week, and it was remaining above a million barrels a day. Pretty strong uh, production once again, but it was down from what we had a week ago. Let's take a closer look here. On the uh, production last week, we had 1.005 million barrels per day. That would actually be down about 19,000 barrels a day uh, from the average that we had the previous week. Now, if you look at the overall four-week average for the last month, that calculates out to be 1.013 million barrels a day. Now, that was uh, a little bit higher than what it had been, I believe. The uh, ethanol stocks at 23.7 million barrels uh, would be down about 600, between five and 600,000 barrels uh, from what we had last week. And once again, the uh, imports remain at zero this time around this week. So maintaining that million barrel per day threshold on ethanol production, that continues to use quite a bit of corn. Now, if we take a look at the deliveries that were posted this morning at the CME, this would be for the uh, March uh, contracts here. Uh, the corn really slacked off from what uh, we had been showing, so they are declining quite a bit, uh, getting toward the end of its importance here. We have corn at 468 contracts that were posted for delivery this morning, soybeans 153. We had Chicago wheat at 11, so that one's about done. Kansas City and Minneapolis aren't even uh, reporting anymore. Now let's take a look at our current, uh, current futures trade. We'll start with the corn and a little weaker tone. Uh, we're going to call it about one and three quarters lower right now at 364 per bushel. That would be within a penny of our low of the day. And on new crop December corn, we're at 390 even. That would be down a penny and a half from our close yesterday. Remember, everything was higher yesterday, led by the wheat. In the uh, soybean trade right now on the May contract, we're down three. 894 is the last trade, and on the new crop November soybeans, looks like we're uh, kind of hovering around that 929 and a quarter area there, and it's roughly about three cents lower on the day as well. Wheat trade, remember the big gains we had yesterday, way over 20 cents higher at the end of the session. Well, today we have the May wheat in Chicago down 12 and a quarter. Last trade, 440 and three quarters, only two ticks from our low of the day. On the Kansas City market right now, you have the May contract down 11 at 431 and three quarters. That's within a penny of its low of the day. We're off our overnight high by 13. If you look at the Minneapolis spring wheat market now, we have the May contract down nine at 551 and three quarters. Let's go to the trading floor in Chicago, and there we'll find Scott Geekus. He's with Walsh Trading. He joins us live from the edge of the trading floor. All right, a lot of weakness in the grain trade today, giving back part of what we gained yesterday. What's up? Yeah, uh, pretty much everything is going to be doing to do the headline risk again. So we had a little bit of a positive catalyst coming out of the trade war talk back and forth. You've seen a little bit of bump in price, definitely led by the wheat market with that huge rally. It was a lot of short covering. You're seeing that short covering come back a little bit, uh, giving back almost about half of the big move yesterday. So for the wheat market, we're definitely watching that 440 level. If we get a close below that, there's more downside to come. So with yesterday being mainly technically inspired from what I gathered from talking with everybody, uh, that, that seemed like it was kind of a, a bit of a hollow rally. Did that flush out a lot of farmers selling? Can you tell? Well, it's you have to see. I mean, you're seeing a lot of big volume coming into all the, the commodities yesterday, but that could just be due to short covering. There's a lot of big short positions out there, so with that short covering, any type of little bit of a rally with continuation is going to cause more short covering. Uh, but as you can see today, that short covering is not lasting very long. You're starting to see pullbacks right now, so we're going to be watching the lows. You know, If we break those lows and close below it, we expect more lows to come in. Okay, Scott, we'll come back in a moment. We'll take a look at our livestock trade as well. We're talking with Scott Geekus, and he's our current guest. We'll be back in just a moment. Time to focus on the livestock trade. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. Let's go back to Chicago and pick up our conversation that we have with Scott Geekus. Scott is with Walsh Trading, and I wondered what you're hearing on the trading floor about the cattle market after that sell-off yesterday, but a bit of a rebound here today, Scott. Yeah, so as soon as we broke that 128 and a half level, you've seen a big volume spike, strong liquidation. It was the second largest volume for all of 2018 as well as 19. So with the bullish fundamentals, we have the weather that's bullish, the weights, as well as a strong cash market. The, mar the market is definitely bullish, and that is confirmed by the upside calls being a little bit more bid than the downside puts, even though we had that big sell-off. But that's one of the reasons where, you know, the market is the market. It doesn't matter what the fundamentals are 
or the technicals. The market's going to do whatever it's going to do. So with that huge open interest on the long side, we've seen that long that sh- that long liquidation yesterday. As soon as we broke that 128 and a half level, and as soon as that happened, you've seen the funds started liquidating. A little bit of a panic, not really too much of a panic, but either way, that big sell-off shook a lot of the longs out. So we're expecting with the bullish fundamentals as well as the weather and everything else that we're going to see a little bit more of a bump up in price. And that is also confirmed by the, the calls being bid up as well. So if the open interest held fairly steady, I guess uh, that would translate into that's not really new short positions coming into the market then, right? Correct. And that's why it's liquidation. All right. Let's talk about the lean hog trade getting a little more and more impressive as we go and get further away from that long term low that we had. Yeah, and the hog tur- uh, the trade, I mean, is clearly defined by the prices in China. They're leading. They're up about 21% just on a month alone. That's definitely a bullish catalyst. Uh, big ex- expectations of an import campaign with China. Uh, they need it. It's not more of a want. It's just they need it. It's just a matter of when are they going to flip the switch to actually start that import campaign. Yeah, lean hogs up $1.68 on that nearby contract right now, and that is quite a move that uh, we can see on the charts here from uh, what we have had about uh, two, two and a half weeks ago or so. Uh, let's walk through all these uh, futures trades here. We'll start with the live cattle and get everyone updated on current trade. Right now, everything higher. We have the April live cattle up $1.27, uh, excuse me, at one twenty seven fifty five. It's up 88 cents now. We have the June contract, 73 higher at one nineteen forty. Well, that only is a couple of ticks from our high of the day now. We have the August up 43 at 115.90. Keep in mind, these are actually about a dollar off of their earlier lows this morning. If we take a look at the feeder cattle market, here you have the March up 65. You have the active April contract now 75 higher at 145.15. And you have the May feeders now 83 higher at 146.93 per hundred weight. And if you look at our lean hog market that Scott was just talking about, we have the April contract up $1.82 at 65.47 and the May lean.